Hi, I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm back having my coffee before I go to work today in Vienna, Austria. It's the second week in September, and before I go to work, I'd like to see what's going on in the church this week. To find out what's going on, do I go to my favorite blog to perhaps get angry at the latest church-related scandal or church political issue? Nope, I go to my calendar. And I see that on this second week in September, there are actually two great feasts. On September 8th, the Nativity of the Mother of God and Ever-Virgin Mary, and on September 14th, the Exaltation of the Cross. I presume that my viewers would expect me to talk about these feasts, but I won't, because I find that these feasts do get enough press, as it is. Our parishes do have church services on these days, and in our parish schools, we do teach the meaning and history, hopefully anyway, of these great feasts. So today, I will concentrate on a more obscure commemoration occurring on September 11th. This is the day of St. Theodora of Alexandria, a female monastic of the 5th century. Now, when I mention September 11th, the memory that immediately springs to mind, for those of us, at least, that haven't been living in a cave for the past decade or so, is not that of a 5th century nun. It is, rather, of planes crashing into buildings of a massive loss of life, and perhaps even of a triumph of injustice. Whatever one believes about the attacks in New York City on September 11th, these events do convey a sense that in injustice triumphed on that day. Now, although the life of St. Theodora of Alexandria admittedly has nothing to do with these events of recent memory, I do find that her life does give a fresh perspective on this concept of the triumph of injustice. So, let's take a look at this life and keep this in mind. St. Theodora lived in Egypt, a country we associate with pyramids, mummies, and angry men waving flags and burning things in the street. St. Theodora was from the city of Alexandria, indicated here with the red circle. Alexandria, founded in the 4th century BC by Alexander the Great, was the capital in Theodora's time of Byzantine Egypt. You can see the capital of the Byzantine Empire here, uh, Constantinople, indicated by the yellow circle and arrow. Alexandria became Egypt's main Greek city, and the educated classes here spoke Greek, including Theodora's family. You can see that she has a Greek name, Theodora, meaning gift of God. There are many more interesting fun facts one could mention about Alexandria relevant to church history, but let's get back to St. Theodora. As a beautiful young woman, she was married to a wealthy man in Alexandria. Both Theodora and her husband were Christians. After she was married, another man, also a wealthy man, fell in love with her, captivated by her beauty. It says in her life that at first he tried to attract her in many ways, but nothing worked. I don't know what he tried. Perhaps he tried to dress up in expensive Egyptian garb. No surprise that that didn't work. Finally, he bribed a very bad woman to convince Theodora to sleep with this man. In various versions of Theodora's life, it says that this woman was actually a sorceress, a witch, and that she used witchcraft to instill in Theodora's mind and body a desire and then decision to sleep with this man. What? I am not making this up. Read it yourself. Be that as it may, the young Theodora did succumb to this temptation and committed adultery with this man. 
But the next morning, she deeply regretted what she had done, started tearing her hair out, as it says in her life, and wondered in tears what she was going to do. Did she throw herself under a train, like Anna Karenina? Of course not. There were no trains in 5th century Egypt. What Theodora did was she sought the advice of another Christian woman. She went to the local women's monastery in Alexandria and talked to the abbess. The abbess, hearing Theodora's story, reminded uh, Theodora of the sinful woman in the Gospel who washed the feet of Christ with her own tears and was not turned away by him, but rather praised by the Lord for her actions. So Theodora resolved to dedicate her life to repentance, which in Greek is metania, meaning literally change of mind. It also means a change in focus. Now Theodora decided to focus on her relationship with Christ. She secretly left the house of her husband, changed into men's clothing, and joined a men's monastery so that her husband would not find her. In the monastery, Theodora, now named Monk Theodore, was very zealous in her monastic labors, often spending nights, entire nights, in prayer, and being an impressive example to the other monastics. On one occasion, after several years of life in this monastery, Monk Theodore was sent to another monastery for provisions. During this trip, Monk Theodore had to stay at the other monastery's guest house, where, at the same time, a woman was staying, actually the daughter of the local abbot. This woman became attracted to the young monk Theodore, not knowing that it was a woman, and tried to seduce him, but of course failed. So instead, this woman slept with another guy in the guest house, I'm not making this up, and became pregnant. Long story short, our Theodora, monk Theodore, was eventually falsely accused of fathering this child, and with the baby was banished from her own monastery. So. She raised the child in a hut outside her own monastery. Shepherds gave her milk for the child while she sustained herself eating wild vegetables. After several years, her abbot, upon request of the other monks, led her back into the monastery with the child. And it was only at Theodora's death that her true identity was revealed, as well as her saintly life. Much can be said about St. Theodora's life, but I will say just the following. She was a woman with secrets. Secrets she kept to herself in the inner world of her heart to her very dying breath. In Theodora's outer visible world, injustice often triumphed, both because of her own human failings and of other people's. But inside, she kept one thing in focus, and that was her relationship with Christ. On this, she centered her thoughts. Even in her darkest hour, she did not hesitate to approach him, because God is not waiting for us to be perfect, you see, to listen to us. The Gospel says of Christ, quoting the prophet Isaiah, he will not break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick until he brings justice to victory. So, when in our outer world, injustice triumphs, be it because of our own actions or other human beings, say on a very large scale, like September 11th, or say in our government, our society, or even in our church, let us center our thoughts on Christ, who remains the same yesterday and today and forever, regardless of what all of us are doing, bringing justice to victory in our own hearts, if we don't hesitate to focus on him. So that's our thought for today and our saint of the week, Saint Theodora of Alexandria, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much.